everybody, this is Jason. Welcome to Liberty Live. Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Praise God. Today we're going to be talking about Simeon, child number two out of 12, son of Abraham, Isaac, and that's right, Jacob, who is surnamed Israel. Simon, or Simeon, is child number two, and he is going to leave a mark by the etymology of his name, the thumbprint of the history of his life, in the people body of Israel, where he lived, his land, his stone, his name, the blessing, what he did good, what he what he needed to work on, or rather his pros, his cons. We're going to study everything today. Short video packed with data. Glory to God. Let's move forward. Today we're going to be talking about Simeon. Who is Simeon? Why are we discussing him today in Liberty Live? Very simple. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, who's changed to Israel, has son number one, Reuben. Son number two is Simeon. Simeon means to listen or to hear. Shimeon, like Shema, hear Israel, the Lord our God is one, like Simon. Simeon and Simon are the same root word. And Simeon, Shema and Shimiel, Samuel, same root word, to listen and or to hear. This is very important about what we're going to discuss today because the etymology of the name Simeon has great value in many situations and circumstances in the Old Testament and in the current, the Brit Kadash, the New Covenant, it's our current covenant. Okay, so first of all, Simeon is the second born. We have a blessing for him. We have a stone for him. We have a symbol for him. And the stone for Simeon is a greenish yellow peridot. It is a beautiful stone, almost like a jade, but it's more of a quartz peridot. Beautiful. And the symbol for Simeon is a gate. Now, it looks like a temple, but it's actually a gate like the gates of Shechem, much like the ones that Simeon and Levi stood at before they took over Shechem. Now, it is commonly known that the first and second born in this family, the holy family, are linked together like a team. They're counted as Reuben and Simeon. Even as Ephraim and Manasseh were blessed by Jacob, Israel, they were Ephraim and Manasseh counted as Reuben and Simeon, meaning that the first and second son were almost like a, a team, almost like gatekeepers for the whole family, ones who will go before to, uh, to prepare the way. They were the oldest brothers. They could commune together. This is a second set, like one is father to son, the other one is brother to brother, which is a very special camaraderie that God has given. We know that God has given brothers for times of adversity. We know if one falls, the other picks the other up. We know that when brothers band together, it is a beautiful thing. And when they're in unity, the Psalms say that it's like oil running down the beard of Aaron. So when they stood at the gate, one on each side, like a gatekeeper, okay? And this is again, the logo or typically what you'll see on prayer shawls, uh, flag banners and, and stamps and things like this, you'll see a gate system which looks like a temple again, but it's actually a gate like the gates of Shechem representing Simeon. Remember when Ephraim and Manasseh were counted as one with Reuben and Simeon, that the first and second are like a team to guide the family, to go before uh, and to literally work together for the betterment of the whole family under the federal uh, patriarch, which was Yaakov changed to Israel. Now, I need you to know a few things about Simeon. So first of all, I said Shema. The word Shema means to listen or hear. And Shema'el, Shemuel, Samuel, Samuel the prophet. Okay, Shema means to hear or listen. And the word Shema, what it means every day is recited in Israel when the sun comes up and when the incense are offered at the hour of prayer. And you say, Shema Israel Adonai Elechenu Adonai Achat. That's the beginning. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, all of your soul, all of your mind, all of your strength, right? This is the number one focus of us all. This is what Jesus said. The great commandments is this. Love that you shall, Matthew 22, 37, 38, 39. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, your mind, and all your strength, and you shall love your neighbors and love yourself. Now, the idea to love God with everything is like bare minimum, right? I mean, he gave us life. He's given us breath. He's here right now. 
this is God between us. He's giving us life, grace, his word, and the word was God. He's given us the ability even to do this, for us to participate in his kingdom in this generation, in our day and in our time, as Abraham did, as Isaac did, as Jacob did, and as you and I get to do during our time on the earth, our shift, to pull the fabric of the kingdom forward one more yard, one more day, one more hour, one more deed, right? Amazing. Blessed be God, our Savior. So, here's what you need to know about Simeon. Simeon had a brother named Levi, through whom which the priesthood comes. That's the next video. Let me just tell you something. They had a sister. So all the, all the brothers had one sister named Dina. And she was taken. They tell the guys, if you circumcise your people, then we can be brothers. Trade, you know, you can marry our daughters, we'll marry yours, we'll trade. And, and then the people go, hey, if they come into our village, we can have everything that's theirs. So they agree. They circumcise the men. Then Simeon and Levi uh, wait till the men are healing and they slay them all with a sword. So they hamstring the horses. Now, when you hamstring a horse, you cut the back legs. I know this is so bad, but you have to know this. It's a biblical term happened many times in the biblical conquests. When you hamstring a horse, it's not just like letting the air out of a tire. It's like slashing the tire all the way. You cut the horse's hamstrings so that it can't, it's powerless. It's like, in a sense, it's it can no longer walk. And usually after that, and it's it would be cutting the ligament so clean through it really can't heal again. And so the horse has to be killed, but you can't ride it immediately. Now, this reminds me of something in the Israeli war, the Six Day War. We were outnumbered on every side. There was nothing for us to do but pray. And God gave us, within 30 minutes, we crippled the enemy's air defenses. It's like hamstringing their horses. We went, and before their planes could take off, we shot all their planes. So now all of a sudden, they're powerless in the air. Within 30 minutes, every single aircraft and enemy is destroyed. So now, imagine if you hamstring all the horses and like, quick, let's go get after them. And the horse can't even move. In other words, you, you cripple their defenses and you cripple their offenses. It's, it's anyway. Now, in war tactics, that's a, it's an amazing thing to do. Strategically speaking, I'm not talking about animal cruelty or anything like that. But just for, for rudimentary warfare, if your enemy is going to come after you and he has a tank, a car, a plane, or horse, and you disarm his vehicle, then he's limited to on the ground, right? On foot. So you take away the superiority. The second thing is that um, when they did this, it wasn't just to, to protect themselves. They were like in revenge. It was like brute force. And later on, when Jacob went to bless them, he said, let them not come in. Let us not come into their council. It's fierce. And their anger is fierce. And 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 then they're it's not honorable speaking of what happened to them because of what they did to that tribe so anyway later on moses blesses everyone and he doesn't bless simeon and in the in the blessing it's that they would kind of wander amongst another tribe because of what they did so they end up having a spot of land with judah in the place of beersheba now talk about amazing god is so good here simeon here listen so what he did was a crime of passion, if you will. Not a crime, but it was revenge. And what the enemy you know, did to her, her daughter and his sister, the daughter of Jacob, was unbelievably horrible. They brought a reproach amongst the whole family. So in some ways, you know, in the old world, yeah, they could be justified, but they did it in such, you know, the way that they did it, it brought a, a dishonor to their dad and it, it could have brought a war. But anyway, God covered them because he, the sin was on the other camp. Okay, but what ends up happening is Simeon ends up dwelling where Beersheba was. Now, you know Beersheba. Beersheba is where God came to Isaac, to Isaac. So God came to Abraham said, I'll be the God of you. I'll be your God inside. I am the God of Abraham. Then he said to Isaac, I am the God of Abraham, but I will also be your God. And he said that in Beersheba, the well of Sheba, the place of the well of Sheba where Isaac uh, found or dug a well. And then later on, he comes to Jacob, said, I'm the God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob. He says that at Bethel. And so now he's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob forever. But Beersheba is where he made that uh, communication. And Abraham lived there for a while. So it's amazing that our destiny, our heritage, like again, all these, sometimes people make such bad mistakes and God uses it so for the good. There's such a rich destiny and inheritance within the people. Uh, that we have to know. Another inheritance, for example, in Simeon, 
do you know that Simeon, so there's two Simon slash Simeons or, uh, or so there's two Simons and one Simeon in the New Testament that are very important. So number one, when Jesus goes to the temple as an infant to be dedicated at the Nicanor Gate, this is in Luke uh, chapter two, there's a man named Simeon who is waiting. Holy Spirit said, you will not die until you see the savior of the world, the consummation of Israel. And he sees Jesus, he lifts him up and he blesses him and then he goes. And I'm thinking, who has the right to bless the Lord, right? First of all, what blessing is he blessing? Simeon. And I found out that before Caiaphas, the New Testament priest, there's a priest named Simon or Simeon. In other words, he gave him the priestly blessing. He was the high priest before Joseph Caiaphas. We know him as Caiaphas. His real name is Joseph Caiaphas. And by giving him this blessing, he was a high priest. And the high priest blesses, perhaps there's a changing of the guard. You see, because Jesus is our high priest. In other words, this high priest had a right heart. God came to him and said, you will not leave until you see the consummation of Israel. And this high priest blesses the new high priest, which is Jesus Christ after the order of Melchizedek, our high priest. There has to be a changing of the guard. In other words, the priesthood change. It says this in Hebrews, that in order for... The priesthood to change, there has to be a change in effect in order for the law to change. The priesthood has a change. In which case it's written that one priest came in which the law records nothing about from the tribe of Judah, that's Jesus. But it said also Abraham, while Levi is in the loins of Abraham, he paid tests in Melchizedek, meaning Melchizedek is a superior priesthood to Levi. And Jesus is after the order of Levi. No, Melchizedek, the eternal priesthood, a superior priesthood. So in other words, Simon came and honored the changing of the guard and basically passed the baton to Jesus, our high priest. That's when the covenant changed, right when the Lord first entered the temple as an infant. Okay, now get this. Then at the end, Simon of Cyrene helps him carry the cross behind him. Remember, he said, take up your cross and follow me, he said to the disciples. Well, Simon of Cyrene literally was commanded by the Roman guards to take the cross and follow him. So you say, listen. So the first Simon blesses him, listen. The Lord's here. The salvation of Israel is here. Then at the end, listen, he's going to the cross for you. The name Simon means listen. Okay. And who is Peter? One of the first, the first apostle, Peter and his brother. Do you know his real name is Simon Peter? Here, the Lord's beginning a new work. Here he's walking it out. Here he's choosing man. Right? The apostles, we are mere men and God chooses us. And then at the end, here, the Lord's work is finished. This is unbelievable what Simeon means, Simon. Shema. Shemuel, to hear God. Okay, now I know what you're thinking. <clears throat> when Simon blessed Jesus, isn't that remind you of, a, there's a song about this, it's called the Nuc Dimitis. And the Nuc Dimitis is, they made like a, ben, a benediction out of this. So before, Joseph Caiaphas, the active duty Kohen Gadol high priest in the New Testament time, there was a priest named Simon. The issue is he only served for one year, from 17 to 18. Joseph Caiaphas served from 18 to 36. So we know Joseph Caiaphas is the right Caiaphas. We even found his bone box, his ossuary. Here's a picture of it here. The real remains of the only biblical character that we found the bones of so far. Okay, now because we know the bones of our Lord are with the Lord. Hallelujah, he's alive still. No other bones from the New Testament time have we found, though we found some ossuaries in archaeology. But Joseph Caiaphas, we know 100% he is who the Bible says he is. Now, before him, there's a priest named Simon. The issue is he only serves for one year. But 10 Kohen Gadol's, 10 high priests before Joseph Caiaphas, there's a man named Simon ben Bothes. Simon ben Bothus serves from 23 up until 5 BCE. Now, scholars, with the exception of a few historians, believe that the actual birth of Jesus is close to 4 BCE, anywhere from 6 to 4 BCE. So it could be 6, 5, or 4 because Herod died at 4 BCE, which the Gospel of Matthew says when Jesus was born. 
when Herod died, he came back, which means it could have been two years before that, because remember, Herod tried to kill all the children, and Jesus went to Egypt, and then Herod died, and they came back two years later. So it's most likely that Jesus was born 6 BCE. Okay, now, if he was born at 6 BCE, then that means, right, 6 BCE, then that means 100% the high priest on duty was Simon ben Bothus, which means we have a match to the Simon or Simeon. Remember, this is the same name, especially if you're talking about he he Hebrew, English, or Greek. Shimeon, Simeon, Simon, same word. We have a match to a high priest during the time Jesus is presented in the temple, which it was only the high priest's duty to bless the people. And Jesus would have been presented to a priest to fulfill the law of Moses at the Nicanor gate. Here's a picture here. You know, nowadays we have child dedication, right? Where you bring your child and you say, Lord, we'll, we commit this child to you. And even other people say, we, we will help raise a child or we, you know, acknowledge this. And this is a, a part of God's holiness, right? To bring the a child into the presence of God, like into account, right? like to be registered in the presence of God and the people of God. And in the same way, this happens. And who's the official at the temple? Simon ben Bosis. He is the high priest on duty, the Kohen Gadol. Again, before the high priest of all high priests comes. Amazing. Now we come to the blessing. And the blessing is such. Simeon and Levi are brothers. Weapons of violence are their counsel. This is coming from Genesis 49. All my glory may it not be joined to their company, for in their anger they killed men, and in their willfulness they hamstrung oxen. Cursed be their anger, for it is fierce, and their wrath, for it is cruel. I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. Now it just so happens that Simeon was divided. He was divided in a lot between him and Judah. Look at the map here. We actually find Simeon dwelling in the land of Judah because it was very big, brother number two with brother number four. And we also find in the middle of the land of Simeon, the place to hear, the place to listen is Beersheba. Now Beersheba actually means the well of seven or the well of the oath. The well of seven because Isaac dug seven wells there. Now Isaac under Abraham, the first two patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Beersheba is where Abraham dwelt, but get this. In Genesis 26, it says that Isaac went there to Beersheba, and the Lord appeared to him here and said, I am the God of your father, Abraham. Well, beloved, after God appears to Isaac at Beersheba, now he becomes the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac. He's now added into the resume, added into the track record, added, added into the lineage, added into the patriarchal line, of what would end up becoming Benai Israel, the nation of Israel. So the land of Simeon is huge. Again, more than the man. The man means to hear, hear. What are you hearing? Hear the Lord, be still and know that I am God. Listen to this still small voice, the whisper of the Holy Spirit. It says in Hebrews today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as you did in the rebellion when we were in the desert. So. It's amazing you can go to a place and quiet your soul and listen that God speaks, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Lord Jesus Christ in all of his fullness. Beloved, we understand about Simeon that his name means so much more, that in every man there's an inheritance, a DNA, a destiny from God that only God can speak to him. It's interesting when you have a call from God, a destiny, like a divine assignment for life, it's called a calling meaning God called. The question is, can you hear? Are you Simeon? Are you listening? Can you hear God? Do you know what God wants to do? Well, if you're not praying to God, how can you know? If you don't answer the phone, how can you hear what is being said, right? So if you don't pray, praying is not just speaking your petitions. It is that. It's holy, but it's also listening, beloved, to God's desires, God's commands, God's intuition, God's directives. You see, Prayers, do you pray and you obey? Well, what you can't obey what you do not hear or do not know. This is why it's so precious the name Simeon means to hear. All over the gospel, we hear God. Hear, O Israel. Hear. Hear a word from the Lord. Blessed is the man who has ears to hear. Jesus in Revelation. 
Blessed is the man who has ears to hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches in this day and in this hour. So you see that the character Simeon finds its way divinely into God's history. Capital H, his, I guess, his story. History is God's story on earth to mankind, which, which takes its crescendo at the crucifixion of Jesus Christ and the resurrection. Remember, the crucifixion is one, but there are many people crucified. Only one resurrected from the dead eternally. This is the Lord we preach. This is the Lord our God. This is the Lord who speaks. He says when the Holy Spirit comes, he will not testify of himself, but he will speak that which he hears, and he will speak it to you. So blessed is the man, Simeon. Blessed is the man who hears. Blessed is the man who's listening to the beautiful Lord our God. And this is the inheritance of the nation of Israel. This is the inheritance of the believers of God. This is what Jesus Christ came to finish, what was started.